Welcome back to the MMA Report Live right here on RadioInfluence.com. Coming up at next Saturday is Bellator 142. We're joined by a man that's going to be making his debut in Bellator. It is Josh Thompson who takes on Mike Bronzoulis. Josh, I appreciate the time. I kind of asked this, the same question to Phil, uh, and obviously it happened a lot quicker with you, but what was uh, just the whole process like from you know fighting out your deal to going through the free agency process and to now be preparing for a fight? Ah, uh, it was great. <laughs> the whole process was great. I mean, um, anytime you can leave one job, get a raise, and go to another job, and then make double the money in your next fight, you're you're feeling pretty good about it. I mean, uh, anytime you get a raise, it, it, no matter what company you work for, anytime you get a raise, you're excited about it. Yeah, I guess, and you know, not to really, I want to talk a lot about your fight coming up here, but let me just ask you in general because a lot of people have asked me this. Why do you think fighters don't fight out their deals to test free agency with, you know, promotions like Bellator and the World Series of Fighting out there that are spending money? Uh, there's a couple reasons. I think some um, some are afraid to. I think that they are afraid to see what they're really worth, which is unfortunate because I think if people had a little more faith in really what they would worth, they'd, they'd see that they're probably worth more than they realize. Um you know, I think a lot of it is uh, poor management. You know, management should management should be telling them, like, hey, let's test the waters. You know, you're talented, you're young, whatever it is that you are, you know, let's test it out and let's see what happens. You know, um, and then the next thing is, is a lot of them are scared into it. Some of them are scared into staying where they're at because, you know, they feel like they're not going to get offered, you know, uh, more somewhere else, you know, or they're told by, you know, another promotion, like, hey, this is what it is and, you know, and and uh, and they're for, they're basically like kind of forced into it, you know. And so, um, a lot a lot of fighters, uh, I guess, look, the younger fighters, what's going to happen is they fight. Let's just say they get hurt. They're on an eighty day suspension or a ninety day suspension or one twenty or one sixty, whatever it is, right? So then they don't really train or they do train, but they're you know they're they're not cleared yet, whatever it is. They get back in the routine, then they run out of money. And then they're like, oh, well, the promotion sometimes won't fight you right away because they know that you're on your last fight of the contract. So they'll hold you out and they'll, you know, oh, no, we're not going to fight you yet. We're not right. That person's hard up for cash. They're hard up for cash. Well, hey, we have this new deal here. We'll have you sign. You sign this new deal. It locks you in. We'll fight you next, you know, in four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. You know, so it's a little bit of a game. It's a little bit of a mind game, I think, when it comes down to, you know, fighters not really being responsible enough to take care of their money and being putting themselves in a situation where they have no choice but to resign because they need to get a fight right away. You know, and that's really some some of that comes down to that. Obviously, I mean, you signed, I think it was what, second week of August, I want to say you signed with Bellator. So it was a quick transition. Did you think that you would be returning this quickly? And was it, or was that basically the plan of like, look, I, I want to get the sour taste out of my mouth of what the f- past couple of fights have been? No, I, really what it was, I wanted to fight here in San Jose, and I wanted to be part of what's going to be, to me, I believe, one of the biggest fights in MMA. I, I can say MMA history because it would be MMA and kickboxing history. Um, you're having MMA and kickboxing in the same arena, same night. Fans are getting what they want. I think we've already sold over 15,000 seats, you know, and here we are still a week from the fight. Everyone knows people buy tickets the last week of the fight, you know, and then you get another 1,500 to 3,000 walk-ups. So, I mean, I could see this event selling out, which is a 19,000-seat arena, you know, and uh, I want to be part of this. I mean, this is something that's never been done before. You have the top-notch glory kickboxing in the arena with Bellator the same night in the same arena, and I'm on that card. Why would you not, when I sign that Bellator, why would you not want to be on this card? That's what I don't get. I mean, if I was, if anything, I was, I, that was the first thing I was telling Scott. I was telling him, like, look, once I sign on this dotted line, you need to guarantee. I need, I want to guarantee to be on this fight. I want to be on this card, you know. And then that was, you know, he made he made it happen for me. Obviously, you're dealing with Scott Coker now, and obviously dealt with him in Strike Force, and and obviously, you know, everybody talks about what what Scott means for fighters. What do you see any major differences in Scott? How he has grown as a promoter from his days in Strike Force into where he's at now? Uh, it's different for me. Um, uh, I knew him from Strike Force kickboxing days because I fought for him a couple times as a kickboxer. You know, I had four fights with him under kickboxing rules and uh, and Strike Force. You know, went four and zero with him. And um, 
you know, good. It, it's like it, it's different. It's the I, the from kickboxing promotions are run differently. The fans are different, you know. But then we went into MMA. As far as the MMA dream, he did everything right. Think about it. He did everything right with Strike Force, and uh, and the proofs in the pudding. You know, I mean, anytime you have somebody else trying to trying to take over what you built, you know, um, it lets you know that you built a good, you built a great product. So, um, you know, the fact that he's trying to rebuild it again, which I believe he will, and uh, he's got he's got everything at his, at his disposal as far as, you know, um, just financial backing. He's got, on top of that, he's got you know, the moral support of the whole Viacom company and just trying to make sure that they can, you know, they can get the job done. You know, they look, they that was my concern when I signed. was like, is this going to be one of those things that kind of like Bodog was? Somebody who has a lot of money and they want to just test the waters and kind of see how it goes and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, no, we're in this to win this. And I, that's what I wanted to be part of. I wanted to be part of something like, hey, we, we want to be at top promotion, which they already are, but they want to be the best. And to hear that come out of, you know, big time players' mouths, it, 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 made, it made it a lot easier to sign that contract. It made, it made me understand, like, this is what they want to do. They're in this, you know, because they're, they're looking to build a great, uh, stable of fighters, and they and they want to grow this product. You know, they want to grow Bellator into being the most successful company in the world. And I think when fans think of the current Bellator roster, 155 is one of those those staple divisions. When people think, I think they think 155, and they think 205 pounds. Were you at all disappointed in, in Mike Bronzoulis as the first opponent, or do you look at him and you look at this as a fight that hey, we're going to put on a show, and this is going to be something the fans are going to enjoy? No, I don't look at it like that at all. Um, what I look at is, um, you know, he's the legacy 155 pound champ. You know, he came from another organization, and now he's going to be he's here trying to trying to to beat me. So no, I don't look at it that way at all. Um, I've had a chance to talk and 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 meet with Scott Coker and see his vision for next year in the in the 155 pound weight class division. And I got to tell you, I'm I'm inspired. I'm excited about it all, and um, and I'm hoping to be part of it. You know, but winning is what's going to make me part of that. If I don't win, then it's not going to happen. You know, so, I mean, those are the things that, um, it's not going to happen for me. It's probably still going to happen for the lightweight division, but uh, it, it may not happen for me. You know, so I need to go out there and I need to win this fight. He, uh, to me, Mike Brazilis is tough. People want people are discrediting him more than, than obviously than I am. But to me, he's, he's fought bigger guys. He knows how to handle bigger guys. He's, you know, he's decent on the ground as far as avoiding submissions, getting back to his feet. He's hard to hold down. He's, he's good on the feet. He's got heavy hands. Uh, you know, he switches his stance. He always keeps you guessing. I mean, what is there not to say? I mean, he's talented. You know, I don't think maybe people are giving him less respect. You know, they're just not giving him enough respect. You know, I need to go out there and I need to get the job. It's not going to be an easy fight. It's going to be a tough fight. And I think it's going to – it potentially has a – it has the potential of going the distance, which is – which is unfortunate for my debut, but I'm just saying it has that potential of going the distance because he's tough. You know, he went the distance. He lost a split decision to Gerald Harris, who's an extremely great athlete, great fighter. Joe Riggs, seasoned veteran, someone who's been around, fought all the best guys in the world, you know, and, uh, and beaten several of them, you know, and, uh, you know, he's fought these guys. So uh, there's nothing that I'm going to present to this kid that's going to scare him, that's going to make him, freak out or, you know, that he's going to be concerned about or worried about. There's nothing. The kid's talented, man, and I got to go out there and get it done. I asked him about you, and I, and I said, you know, kind of assess Josh, and he said, physically, he's the same guy. You know, he's a top 10 guy, but this is what he said, quote, mental is not the same. He's looking for a way out, I believe. He may not admit it, but he is ready to make movies or whatever else he is doing with his business and clothing line, which is very good. This is not what I want. I am starving, more starving than ever. He may be hungry, but I am starving. End of quote. When you hear him say that, what what kind of goes through your mind? Well, <laughs> what goes through my mind is what goes through my mind like every single fight. I've been fighting now. I've been ranked in the top 10 probably for the last 15 years. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I think this way about every single guy that gets in the cage with me. They they all want to beat me. Like there's no there's no doubt about it. They're all they all um, I have a legacy basically. I mean I, 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 I no matter what you say, I'm I I'm kind of, I'm kind of like a current legend. I mean, B J Penn tells me this all the time. Like dude, 
you're still doing this. It's insane that you're still doing this at this level, and you freaking are tough as nails. You know, I mean, like texting back and forth with DJ, you know, and he's talking to me and pumping me up and motivating me and just I'm thinking to myself, it's great to hear things like that come from somebody like him, man. And, you know, and um, all these guys, they all look at me and they lick their chops. It doesn't matter. When I get into training, man, like the young guys in my gym, they're talented. But it's like every day they need to go out there and they need to beat me. They feel that way. It's like I saw, I've watched them spar with other guys and they're getting handled, you know, but then when they get in there with me, they want to just try and handle me. They want to do whatever they can. Like they, they fight a little harder. And that's what's going to happen. This this guy, Mike, is going to come out, and he's going to fight a little bit harder than he normally fights. You know? And i got to be prepared for that. I've got to be prepared for that with all the guys that I fight. Like I said, I've been doing this. I've been in this sport a long time. I've got a name. I've, I'm probably the toughest name this guy has ever fought. I'm the most talented, I believe, that he's ever fought. And no, no knock on Joe Riggs and Gerald Harris and these guys. But to me, I feel like, you know, I've had – I've had a better career than all these guys, you know, that he's ever fought. I mean, being ranked in the top 10, being number one seed, you know, for other titles, being a former world champion, you know, in strike force. I mean, I, I've beaten top guys, you know, and, and I've been ranked in the top three, four, five, two. I've been ranked number one in the world several times, you know. So um, that being said, I, I'm, I'm the best guy he's ever fought. So, of course, he's going to think that. He's going to think that. You know, he's trying to psych himself up. He's trying to get himself motivated. He's like, hey, I need to fight a little bit harder than I normally fight to get this job done. You know, I just don't know if he has as much fight in him as he thinks, you know, to get the job done. So as far as looking as a, looking for a way out, look, people don't seem to understand. Like, I'm a veteran at surviving. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've, been around, I've been around for so long, and I'm still – guys have been flashes in the pan. They've come – They've been great, and they're gone. You don't even, I can't even remember. I can, I, can list, I can list off a whole name of guys that have come and gone in the amount of time I've been still ranked in the top ten in the world. So um, you can't tell me that I don't still want it. You know, but when that day comes, I definitely won't be fighting. You know, I've got other opportunities, other things on my mind, but that, that time is not right now. What do you credit your longevity to? I mean, is there, is there anything you can credit to of why you've been able to, to stay at this high level for such a long time? I mean, I look at it for a bunch of reasons. I've taken care of my body. I've never used PEDs. You know, those are things that I feel have a lasting long effect on your body. Like people, they, their careers go up and down based on the fact that, you know, they've been, you know, probably using PEDs, you know, up and down in their careers. You know, um, as far as I've, t- I've taken care of myself, you know, I, I potentially, I basically overtrain all the time. But in overtraining, I also stretch. I also, you know, I do a lot of road work. I do... I do light weights, explosive drills. I don't lift heavy. You know, I don't do any of that stuff. I, I do all the I do all the right stuff to take care of. I eat super clean. You know, I mean, if you, I mean, how many 37 year olds you see and step on the scale look as ripped as me? It's because I take care of myself. You know, I take care of my body on the off season. You know, yeah, sure, I'll have a beer or two. You know, and I'll eat I'll eat a couple pancakes here and there with chocolate syrup on it and stuff. But you don't see me every day sitting down with, you know, with, with a bowl of ice cream and a stack of pancakes and drinking milkshakes every day. You know, that's not me. You know, I eat, I eat clean. I take care of myself. And that's, that's the biggest thing, you know. And, uh, you know, and those are the – I take I, – every once in a while I'll take a yoga class. You know, just I try to do things that are, you know, that are different, something that will help keep my body fresh, you know, and things like that. Sometimes I own a gym. You know, I own Knox Martial Arts and Fitness. We do fitness as well as jiu-jitsu as well as kickboxing. So the fact that I'm doing those things, I still teach the classes. I still have to come up with new exercises. I still have to, you know, inspire and, and, and inspire other people to hit their fitness goals. And that keeps me motivated, too. When I, see, when I see my members getting motivated and inspired, you know, the fact that they're trying to lose weight and they're trying to get in shape and, you know, and that's their dream and that's their goal, you know, it makes me more motivated to, you know, get my, my fat ass up off the ground. You know, and uh, and go in there and, and ride the airline bike and ride the assault bike and, and the lift, you know, and go do some plyometric work and things like that. You know, do a, go do box jumps and train jiu jitsu and they, those are the things that motivate me, man. So um, that's what I did. I dedicate my longevity in the sports and things like that. And of course, you're going to be fighting here next Saturday against Mike Bronzulis. Josh, I really appreciate your time. Look forward to the fight. And final thing, anybody out of young guys, uh, aka, we need to be keeping our eyes out for here that maybe we're going to see in a Bellator show soon. 
Yeah, you're going to see him in Bellator next week. Uh, two of the guys there are phenomenal, man. Um, I got to tell you, Thomas Yonji, that kid is electrifying. And she's you're going to see things that you probably will never see in another fight. Do you guys think that guys like Pettis, and guys, they do new things and new fresh things and exciting things? Wait till you see this kid fight, man. He's a whole new Thomas. He's a whole... You know, he had a little stint, uh, stint in, in strike force and stuff, and he was just learning the sport, but he's on a whole different level right now, you know? And then uh, Gabe Carrasco, um, this kid is phenomenal, dude. He's just got heavy, heavy hands, world-class Muay Thai kickboxing, fought on the amateur world team, traveled around and fought. I think kids are electrifying. So I got to tell you, if you guys are going to watch any of those any of those fights that night, you, I would make sure you try and get there and watch those, uh, those two guys fight. Now I got a reason to uh, when I'm sitting in my hotel room in New Orleans to tune on the uh, Spike.com prelims. There you go. That's what they should be. All right, cool, Josh. Appreciate time and uh, look forward to seeing your fight, man. All right, bud. Take it easy. Thanks, man.